What's good everybody? We've got a 98 Chevy pickup and the cruise control is not working. So in this video we're going to test the cruise control and see what the problem is. Fortunately on these trucks you can pretty much test everything right here at the cruise control module. And that's what we're going to be doing today. This isn't like my trailblazer where everything's controlled by the computer. Everything's controlled by this. As you can see, it's got a cable that comes off of it and hooks directly into the throttle body. So I've come up with this fancy uh, little test checklist, I guess you can call it. And this is what we're going to follow and this is what you can follow at home. All you really need, digital multimeter. I use these little T-pins for back probing stuff. So by doing the following test that we're going to do here, we can determine what's wrong whether it is the cruise control switch, whether it is the brake switch, or basically anything. And we're gonna do it all right here. So let's begin. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do all the 12 volt tests. I'm gonna hook the negative lead of my meter up to the battery negative. And then I'm gonna use the positive lead of my meter and this T-pin to test several of these circuits. So you can see this thing's kind of late. They got it smushed up against the brake booster. Unplug the connector by pulling up on this tab. Just kind of wiggling them loose. What we're going to do is we're going to use our T-pin to just touch this right here. We are not going to take our, me our meter pin and smash it down in here. If you smash this down into this little connector and spread that pin apart, you're going to be in a world of shit. We're going to have the key in the on position. We're also going to have the cruise switch in the on position. As you can see, our cruise switch has been through some rough times. But when it's slid into the middle like that, that's on. And that's where we want it for this test. So key on, and this is on. So our gray wire right here should have battery voltage, which it does. So pin A. The gray 12 volt with the cruise switch on, we have that. Next, we want to do pin F, which is the brown wire, 12 volts with the key on. See, that's why we turned them both on at first. So, one was just for the key on, and one was also with the switch on. So, pin F is up in this corner right here. We'll touch him. You can look at the meter, we've got battery voltage there. 12.2. Okay. So we've got him. So now what we're going to do, my assistant is going to hop in the vehicle. When I say go, she's going to press and hold in this button. And that's going to be on this pin right here. Go ahead. So he's got battery voltage there. For this test, she's going to push this all the way to the right and hold it. And this is going to be this pin right here. Go ahead. Okay. As you can see, we have battery voltage there. Now in these next two tests, what she's going to be doing is just pressing and holding the brake pedal when I tell her to. Our first test is going to be on this pin right here. With her foot off of the brake pedal, we should have 12 volts, which we do. Go ahead and hit the brake pedal. And you can see we just have some residual crap. In the pin right above that one, which is this little guy right here, we're going to do the same test, but it's going to, the results are going to be exactly the opposite. So we have some residual crap right here. Go ahead and press and hold the brake pedal. On. And you can see we got pretty close to battery voltage. And you can turn the key off too. This is going to be kind of controversial, but all we're going to do is just do a quick test for go, no go on the ground. We're just going to switch the leads around. Just going to put the positive on the positive battery cable. My T-pin, my, my negative, and we should see close to battery voltage now. It's right about 12.6 volts. So we're good there. Well, so far we're doing pretty good here on this uh, test. We passed everything. Now we come down to the hard one. And hard's just a, I don't know, it's not really fair to say it's hard. What we're looking for here is 
is. I'm trying to think of the right way to say this without being like over technical or whatever. Because the last time I showed using a lab scope on here, people kind of like, people went nuts. They thought it was like some witchcraft or some shit. So I'm not even going to fucking show that. That's how I would do it. But we're going to try to do it more of a do-it-yourself friendly way. That way we don't scare anybody with big stuff like oscopes and shit. From what I determined reading the service information on pin K, which is this top right pin right here, we should see a 0 to 5 volt voltage that's going to fluctuate. Now I don't even know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. What I need to do is find a way to get the wheels to turn while I can watch this just to see if it you know, passes the test. What we're going to do here, we're going to try to take our T-pin bring it up real far up into here. Maybe bend them a little bit. Plug this thing back in. Then we need to find a suitable ground somewhere up here in the engine compartment, which I don't really like any of these grounds. But what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and use this as my ground right here. I know there's a hundred other different places you can grab the ground from, but like I said, for the purpose of this video, this is where we're gonna do this test from. And I'm gonna hook the red lead of my meter up to this pin right here. Now, I'm not really concerned about the voltage reading, but when I put this in reverse and back this truck up and then put it in drive and go forward, I'm going to be looking at the analog bar graph down here. All I'm looking for is to see it change. That's it. So watch the bar graph. Now, what I did right there was very unconventional. You can save yourself the time of writing me the hate mail about how that's not the right way to do it. I do not give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for the for this K test, I mean, what what we would have technically have done is hooked up a lab scope and just looked for a you know a square wave, and that indicates that the PCM is sending the cruise control module. Uh, speed signal, but really like I said, I mean to make it do-it-yourself friendly We really just want to know if we have a signal here or not So we just use the analog meter on our digital multimeter and Personally to me that passes the test the way that this that whole thing works on this truck It's got a speed sensor on the back of the trans and that goes up to the PCM and it also does it goes up to like the uh the speedometer and stuff like that. It does a bunch of other stuff, but the point I'm trying to make here is is that the speedometer works, you know what I'm saying? And we're getting a signal to the cruise control module. So just based on that, there's no further diagnosis of the speed sensor required. So what does this mean in the grand scheme of things? We've passed all our voltage checks here. Why can't the cruise control work? I think it needs a new one of these. I mean, we've, we've, we've collected our evidence here, and, and just in this truck right here, it's, it needs a new cruise control module, and that's what we're going to put in it. But we're not doing it this video. I'll tell you why. If I made a video that said, test and replace cruise control module, and that motherfucker ran, you know, 40 minutes because I did all this, plus replace that and shit, nobody would watch it. They'd, they'd start watching it and they'd see this and they'd get scared and they'd pee their panties and they, they wouldn't watch it, you know what I mean? And they'd go watch the other video for replacing the brake switch. So we're going to cut it up into two parts. 
part one, what you just saw right here. We tested the motherfucker. Part two, we replaced the motherfucker. Done deal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna try to release these both on the same day. So part one and part two will both be up. If you just want to know how to replace the module, well, you can watch that video. If you want to know how it works and how to test all its circuits, well, it's the video for you. So thanks for watching. If you have one of these Chevy pickups, you know what I mean? They made millions and millions of them. We definitely want to subscribe to my shit. Well, I always like to put off topic stuff on the end of my videos. You know, I made that video for Trailblazer PO340 and I showed scoping the cam signal. People are like, that video was strange. I didn't understand that video. Well, if you can't understand stuff like that, you know, you ought to read a book or something, you know what I'm saying? Because it explains that that's what technicians do in the field, at least real technicians. Not these parts changing chumps you see all over YouTube, you know what I'm saying? I kind of agree with what they're getting at, you know? When people want to see how to change the cam sensor, that's all they want to see. They didn't want to see the testing side of it. But there's some people that do want to see the testing side of it, that have some kind of interest in them. So I've learned from that. That's why I'm going to split videos like these up, you know what I'm saying? Because just because some people, it, it kind of goes over their head and they don't understand what's going on. You know, it shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't affect everybody that watches, you know what I'm saying?